Hey, internet, how are we doing? Lovely Friday morning here, lovely sunny day again, a bit fresh, but hey ho. So, eBay, how did we do with eBay? I don't know if any of you followed any, uh, the auctions at all. Um, a mixed bag, you know, I think one of the problems with eBay is everybody's out of forgetting the bargain of the century. Do you know what I mean? It's just people perceive that I think that it's going to be the cheapest thing possible. One of the things I would say is, before I talk about the results of the auctions, is that um, we're up to what, 3.6 thousand subscribers now? A little bit over that, 3.6 thousand, 3.7 thousand maybe. The vast majority of my most excellent subscribers are non-UK residents. I think the biggest following that we have is, or the biggest following that Rideable Classics has, is from the States, from my dear friends across the pond. And uh, it's great, you know, so... And then after the States, uh, there's other European countries. Um, and, you know, Britain ranks in the people who watch the videos are quite low down compared to the amount of people from America uh, who watch the videos. And, you know, so I guess I'm never going to get those guys, you guys, uh, bid on eBay because <laughs> you're never going to pick it up, are you? So eBay is, you know, uh, full of people looking for deals, I guess. And people don't want to travel too far for them either. Um, so, how did we do? Well, the track bike, uh, that did really well. You know, I had no real expectations about what the track bike would sell for. I mean, I'm, I'm, I sold it as a non-runner, as spares or repair, you know, but very much it is what it is. It's a tatty, non-running parts bin. And, uh, you know, it's going to be really good for the chap who's bought it because it, it represents a ton of spares. And you've only got to look on eBay for when people are buying these bikes and then breaking them to sell as parts. I mean, I think it's an absolute crying shame because it's taking older bikes off the road. But I suppose the other way of looking at it is... Uh, if those bikes are being taken off the roads to so be sold as spares, the people who are buying those spares are maintaining their old bikes. So I suppose in some respects it is keeping bikes on the road, even though it seems a bit counterintuitive. But anyway, certainly for something like the road bike, you know, our little red road bike, um, it would be such a shame for somebody to have bought that and... Uh, break it you know and and sell it for parts and it's got some really nice parts on it I think all of the bodywork's in good condition the, you know it's got a lovely set of original exhausts on it the engine runs nice uh, it goes really well it's got great wheels and the chassis is okay and, you know so it's it's a it's a good bike however whilst the track bike is going it's been picked up in the morning and uh, you know I've had correspondence with that guy nice fella you know whatever but it's a deal is done and he's picking it up in the morning the gentleman who put the winning bid on the uh, road bike hasn't responded to anything at all so I've left it the best part of a week thinking oh you know he might be away he might be this and what have you and I've emailed a couple of times and I've had absolutely no response at all. Um, so I guess it didn't sell. It did sell, and it cost me, I don't know, 25 quid or whatever it was for putting it on eBay, but the guy hasn't been in touch, hasn't uh, concluded the sale, he hasn't paid. I mean, obviously it was cash on collection, but yeah, it didn't sell. I'm really quite disappointed. But I suppose in some respects, this model of bike was never intended for the UK market. Now, they must have had a reason for that. I can only think it was because the 400 was just not a very popular choice. Maybe it was to do with the licensing laws originally, I, I don't know. But 
I suppose well, I mean, it was back in the eighties, wasn't it, where you know you could ride up to a two fifty on an L plate. I'm showing me age a bit there, but anyway, so I don't know. Maybe it was something to do with that, and then when people passed the test, they wanted something a lot bigger than a four hundred. I'm not sure, but anyway, so it didn't go. So it cost me money on eBay, and it didn't. Uh, it didn't sell. It's like I say, I'm not going to name and shame. I'm not really bothered. It's cost me twenty five quid. But what am I going to do now? Am I going to put it back on? You know what? No. Um, I might sell it at some point. But what I'm going to do with it now, I'm going to uh, give it a dusting, a light misting of ACF 50, which I've got a ton of. I'll, I'll run it off the compressor and we'll dust it over with the ACF 50, which is, for those who don't know, anti-corrosion formula. It's a formulation that was, or it's a, it's a liquid that was dis, um, designed by the Air Force, I think. It was certainly the aviation industry. Uh, for for control and corrosion on planes and what have you, it's brilliant on bikes. It absolutely stops the corrosion dead in its tracks. It's safe to put on pretty much anything. So I've used it for quite some time. So I'm going to dust it on with off with ACF 50, cover it up, shove it up the corner, and uh, I'll wait. I mean, I'm not in any hurry to sell it. It's not like I'm waiting for the cash for something else. I mean, the cash would have been nice to spend on the blue one, but, you know, hey-ho, I'm not giving it away. Um, so yeah, ACF 50, cover on, shove it up the corner. Track bike will be gone in the morning, and uh, I've reached out to TT Motorcycles to see how the 550 is coming along. I'm just waiting for a response from that. Hopefully, hopefully it might not be too, too much longer. Um, I appreciate they're working it in with all the work that they've got on, so absolutely no criticism of those guys. They're helping, and that's that's all all I'm focusing on at the moment. So yeah, um, that's where we are. It's a bit of a bit of disappointment, really, but the track bike's gone, so that's freed up some cash. So I'm thinking of buying a full set of new new full set of indicators for the blue one, and uh, I think we'll be starting the paintwork on that uh, very shortly. Anyway. So I think we're we're um, in agreement, or I think we've decided really, that um, shabby chic, as nice as it might be, isn't probably the way forward. Not for this, because I'm, I'm never going to sell it, see, so I'm, I'm going to keep it. So paintwork on this one next, I think. You've got me saying words in my head, filling my mind with these images. We feel like I can't just to fill you in on what happened with the eBay sales. Uh, as I said, bit of a disappointment. The guy just didn't get in touch. Um, you know, I've chased him a few times, but I've got more, I've got, I've got other stuff to do. So I'm not that bothered really, you know, it will just sit under the cover, as I said, anyway.
that's that. So, as you've just been seeing on the 600, uh, and as I was just saying, uh, that is due for to be the next project, um, pending what uh, TT Motorcycles come back to me with. If they say that the uh, 550 is going to be back with me within the next, I don't know, five day, five couple of weeks, say, uh, then I think I'll probably hold on uh, or hold off doing or starting the uh, blue 600R because of course there'll be parts everywhere when I do it. As I say, I think we've decided that uh, we are going to uh, we are going to uh, redo the paintwork completely. So it's going to be a full strip down, yay! So that'll be good fun. Um, I might look to. I mean, I've got some of that uh, mesh for the plastic repairs, uh, which I was using last week, and that was an eBay purchase. It was really quite useful. So it comes as this metal mesh. And what you do is you cut off the piece that you need, lay it over the back of the the crack. You know, you, you try and get that crack as close into as you can. What I did is I put some tape on the back or, or the other side of the to really hold the crack together, and then melted some plastic into this and into the plastic of the actual back of the fairing as well to make sure it was really you know really secure. That seems to be quite successful. I think I'm doing it correctly. I've watched a lot of videos on it. And um, yeah, you know, so there's gonna be a lot of plastic repairs to be done on the 600. And the stripes look like they're gonna be a real challenge. So uh, yeah, uh, shabby chic, nice and original. Yeah, I get all of that, but I'm not gonna sell the 600R. And um, yeah, so that's it for today. Thanks very much for sticking with me. Uh, and we'll catch up next time where we'll be hopefully starting the 600 or we'll have some news about when the 550 will be coming back. So uh, thanks very much, Internet. I'll see you soon. Bye.